It's the season finale in a roller coaster year at Tottenham Hotspur. We blew our chances of Carabao Cup glory, losing to Manchester City in the final. But we're still in the fight for Champions League football in the Premier League and still have a chance of FA Cup success for the first time in over 30 years. And with hat trick hero Dusan Vlahovic finally coming into form, he'll be hoping to be the man to lead us to the promised land today. And as ever, if you are enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. And of course, we're starting off with your comments. Being a Tottenham fan, I would love to see Ansu Fati and Adeyemi eventually join the club. And for the right-hand side, Takafusu Kubo would be perfect and a realistic signing. And for backup at striker for Richarlison would be Evan Ferguson, and he's said to be the next Harry Kane. And as for the defence, Antonio Silva and for more experience, Tomori would be perfect. Right, so first and foremost, there is quite a lot to unpack in that one comment. Another Brighton wonder kid at Evan Ferguson looks like he's joined Inter Milan on this career mode. So the question is, would he want to jump ship and join a new club in immediate succession? Plus, Plus added to the fact that we've got the likes of Richarlison, Dusan Vlahovic and the up-and-coming Aleo Valiz all up front, I actually think we're pretty well stocked in that area at the moment. Now Tamori is actually a really good shout, he's English, he's homegrown and he's got experience of Premier League football, plus the fact he's proven himself as a top quality centre-back away at AC Milan. The thing is though, having just brought in the likes of Edmund Tapsoba and also Benjamin Pavard only this season, Plus the fact I've also got Christian Romero and the likes of Mickey van der Ven all in central defence. Again, I think it's another position that I'm actually pretty well stocked in. However, with Ansu Fati enjoying his start to life in Brighton colours, it looks like he's playing for Barcelona on this game. Whether that's a glitch or whether they've recalled him because he's just playing so well for Brighton, I don't quite know. Now, Adeyemi turned out to be an absolute wonder kid on FIFA 23. And as you can see from his stats, they're pretty decent across the board. Plus, he would offer versatility being able to play both on the left, right-hand side of midfield and up front as well. Well. And as for Takafusa Kubu, not only does he offer versatility as well, but he is someone then in the comments you are absolutely desperate to see sign and play for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And the thing is, with Jung Min Son turning 32 at the start of next season and perhaps entering the latter part of his career, the left side of midfield might be a position that I want to start to look at sooner rather than later. Vicario is doing fine, so don't change him and return your formation to what it was before. Plus, those crosses to the back post just don't work. Maybe try changing that. Yeah, so there are definitely some mixed feelings about Guillermo Vicario's first season in a Tottenham shirt. He's had some absolute howlers, but but he has also been the clean sheet leader in the Premier League at some point this season. Added to the fact we've only conceded 28 goals in the Premier League and it's only his first season playing English football, perhaps I need to give him a little bit more time as my established number one. Now the formation change is actually quite an interesting one. The entire purpose of this formation was to try and improve the service into my strikers and to get them to improve their form. And it kind of seems like it has worked with both Richarlison and Dusan Vlahovic scoring 10 goals in all competitions, but with only 5 goals in 18 Premier League games with Vlahovic, and only four goals in 17 Premier League games for Richarlison, something still isn't quite working. So let me know down in the comments below, should I stick with this formation heading into the start of Season 2? Should I go back to my original 4-3-3 formation? Or should I try something completely different? And finally, you should start Mickey van der Ven as he's younger and has a higher ceiling than Benjamin Pavard. Yeah, to be fair to Mickey van der Ven, I kind of feel like he's been slightly hard done by this season. He is only 22 and he has already gone up by three points to now an 81 rating. And whilst ben Benjamin Pavard does have a higher rating than him and provides us with more experience. He hasn't exactly lit up the Premier League like perhaps I would have expected him to. Similar to the Basuma and Hoybier situation, I think our biggest problem is that we just do not have European football and we don't have enough fixtures in the calendar to try and satisfy the development of all of my players. Now, one thing to consider with Pavard, though, is he does have experience playing at right back. And whilst Pedro Porro has firmly established himself as our number one right back choice, Emerson Royale hasn't really done enough to compete with him and has been linked with moves away from Spurs regularly in real life. However, let me know in the comments down below, in order to bring this man, Mickey van der Ven, back into the fold, at the heart of my central defence? Should I consider selling Emerson Royale when the transfer window reopens? And should I consider moving Benjamin Pavard over to the right-hand side of our defence? For now, though, with the biggest Champions League fight that the Premier League has seen in some time, and with a ninth place Chelsea up next at Stamford Bridge, I'm going to be hoping that our hat-trick hero Dusan Vlahovic can continue his fine form against our London rivals. With Chelsea flailing around in the Premier League, they will be desperate to put an end to our fine momentum in our fight for Champions League football. So we're going to have to have our wits about us, and we're going to have to make sure we get the job done. Gusto for Chelsea down the right hand side. He's been chased down here by Ryan Sessegnon, but he's played a nice ball into Madueke. Madueke strikes. It's so easy for Vicario. Madison to bring the ball forward into Kulusevski on the right hand side. He's got options behind him. Not really too many in the box, but finds Pedro Porro. He swings it across. Looking for Jung Min Son at the back post. Oh my word, that would have been absolutely fantastic if he'd have scored. Pedro Porro 
into Hoybier. Hoybier looks for Vlahovic, who's come deep. Into Madison. Turns. Into Kulusevski. Fires it back across. Again, no one in the box. Enzo Fernandez down the right-hand side into Gusto. One-on-one -on -one with Ryan Sessegnon. It's been a real battle between these two on this right-hand side. But Gusto looks like he's getting the better of him. But Ryan Sessegnon with a brilliant challenge. Into Jung min Son now. Lovely turn away from the defence. Jung min Son to bring it forward as the referee blows for half-time. Kukurea for Chelsea. Under pressure from Madison. Wriggles away from it, though. Chelsea bring the ball forward, but Benton Core intercepts it really well. Vlahovic out to Kulusevski on the right-hand side. He's going to try and drive past Kukurella, and he does a really brilliant job of doing so. Plays it back into Vlahovic, who strikes it with his left. Big save from Sanchez. Madison will take the results in corner and fires it in, looking for the head of Benjamin Pavard. Doesn't quite find it. Does find the substitute, Brennan Johnson. Back out wide to Madison. Oh, try to fling that in on the first time with his right foot. Doesn't get it right, but Sessegnon will bring it forward and ends up losing it to Sterling. And so Fernandez into Gusto. We're pressing high here, but Gusto does a really nice job of getting away from that press and feeding in Raheem Sterling. Lovely job from Chelsea, but it's James Madison who wins it back high. Benton Core into the path of Jung Min Son. This is where we can try and hit them where it hurts. It's a ball across into Vlahovic. Sanchez got there just in the way to make the block. And Chelsea get the ball clear. Zelensky for Chelsea being hunted down by Benton Core, but manages to get away from him. He's now being hunted by Pedro Porro. Pedro Porro continues, but it's fired into the box. Sessignon with an acrobatic clearance to get it away. Well, it's been no luck for Vlahovic up front today. He just cannot seem to find a good vein of form here at the moment. He blows hot and cold, and it's Richarlison's turn to try and get the goal. And Kunku for Chelsea. Tried to be challenged by Pavard. Doesn't manage to win it, though. Now Enzo Fernandez, well intercepted by Mickey van der Ven, who's come on as left back in place of Ryan Sessignon. Richarlison now can feed it through to Mana Solomon on the left-hand side. He just about keeps it in play. Plays the ball through to Richarlison. Into Hume and Son who's moved centrally. Son into the penalty area. Son to strike. Big save. It's going to be a corner here. We've just got five minutes remaining to try and find a winner. It's thrown into the box to the head of Brennan Johnson just over the bar. Down the line into Raheem Sterling. Only a few minutes left on the clock here as Mickey van der Ven puts in a very nice challenge on the Englishman. It's Benton Core now into Richarlison. If either of these two teams are going to strike, it does look like it will be us as Manor Solomon's offside. We are deep into stoppage time here at Stamford Bridge. Neither team so far are able to make the breakthrough, but it is going to be us, surely with the last chance of the game. Jung Min Son was inches away from feeding that into Richarlison as the referee blows for full time. Well, Maurizio Pochettino, the former Spurs man, looks on despondent, but I'm sure overall he'll be pretty happy with that result. Full time here, Chelsea nil, Spurs nil. And it's no surprise to see Vlahovic is frustrated after a poor display against Chelsea. And despite his hat-trick against Luton, he just cannot seem to put a decent run of form together. And to be honest, up front is clear where our problems lie. Only 40 goals scored so far in the Premier League, which is kind of frustrating considering the quality and the array of attacking talent we have at the club. Is it down to the formation? Is it down to the quality of coaching? Is it down to the quality of players that we have at the club? Or perhaps do I need to look closer to home and it may be all down to me? Let me know down in the comments below, how are we going to solve the goal scoring problem at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club? However, after managing to get back to winning ways, could have seen a 2-0 win against Luton Town. We are now hit with some really disappointing news. As Destiny Udoggy has decided to march into my office furious about a lack of game time. Now, to be honest, I've got absolutely no idea where this has come from. He started 30 games in all competitions, played 25 in the Premier League, and was only replaced in the starting 11 by Ryan Sessegnon for the previous game purely because of fatigue. Now, is this just a glitch with the game, or have I done something wrong here? I'm not quite sure. He has now submitted a transfer request. But fortunately, I do have time on my side as he's still got three years left on his contract. But let me know down in the comments below what you think. How on earth do I solve the Udoki problem? Meanwhile, back on the pitch, a 2-1 away win against West Ham is followed up with a 4-1 win at home against Nottingham Forest. But one goal from Kulusevski in the second half was only enough to secure a point away at Newcastle. However, those results extend our unbeaten run in the Premier League and bring us up to second place in the table as we start to take charge of this fight for Champions League football. However, after tasting defeat in the Carabao Cup final at the hands of Manchester City. It is time for me to rally the troops in front of the media. I'm confident we can rise to the occasion. I am confident we are good enough to go out and prove it. And I am confident we are going to get a result in the FA Cup semi-final. Ruben Diaz for Manchester City into Calvin Phillips. De Bruyne picks it up, being challenged by Hoybier really nicely. Benton Core now into James Madison. Madison releases Kulusevski down the right hand side and he gets there ahead of Nathan Ake and Kulusevski into the box. Kulusevski to strike. 
Kulusevski to put us 1-0 up inside 10 minutes. Well, that is what you call starting on fire. Kulusevski just managed to get there and sneak ahead of Nathan Ake. Was the goalkeeper delayed in coming out to him? Perhaps so, but I don't care. Kulusevski gets the job done. He gives us an early lead. Phillips into De Bruyne. We've got a hope having taken an early lead in the Carabao Cup final. We don't succumb to the same fate as we did on that day. Phil Foden, nice pass into Calvin Phillips. Phillips is surely going to try and release Phil Foden, but he's being covered by Udogi. Uh, Calvin Phillips continues his run, but Udoki wins it back and then loses it in the centre of the park as it's fired wide there by Matthias Nunes. Nunes for City. Nice pass into Jack Grealish. Grealish into Nunes again. Skips past two challenges, but Pedro Porro is there ahead of him. Now Hume Son, who's come into the centre to pick the ball up. Into Udoki, who's also come centrally. James Madison feeds in Kulusevski. He gets into the box again, fires it across. It's poor. Easy for Edison. Benjamin Pavard to bring the ball out of defence. Nice pass right through the midfield there. Into Vlahovic. Out to Kulusevski. Kulusevski across at the back post. Look at Madison. Oh, it's just wide. What a chance. Oh, Madison, I just hope he doesn't live to regret that. Nice pass into Bentoncourt. Skips away from the challenge of De Bruyne and Bentoncourt continues his run. Bentoncourt, I'm going to try and look for Hume Son on the left-hand side. Takes it, doesn't take it as well as I'd hoped. But Madison skips away. That is absolutely beautiful. James Madison slides on his knees and he hits the badge and he celebrates like a superhero. As that goal is a worthy goal that any superhero would be delighted to score. Look at that. He just takes two players out with the coif turn inside the penalty area. And he gives Edison no chance by just curling it around him. And he gives us a two-goal lead in the FA Cup semi-final. Nunes for City. Looking for options. Finds Calvin Phillips, who manages to wriggle away into Jack Grealish on the left-hand side. City looking to fire back early here. Vicario with a massive save. And Udogi with the calmness and composure to take it out of the penalty area. Half-time. Udogi goes in field. Finds Benton Core. Nicely done. James Madison going to try and look for Kulusevski on the right-hand side. Again, we found our way into the Manchester City penalty area. Couldn't find our way into the back of the net, though. City have got less than half an hour here to try and find a way back into this game. And Kevin De Bruyne throws it into the penalty area. Headed out well by Kulusevski, who so far for me has been man of the match. But Madison now has it. Can he try and release Vlahovic? He does release Vlahovic. And Vlahovic drives into the box. Vlahovic to make it three. He does make it three. And surely now that puts the final nail in the Manchester City coffin. Well, Vlahovic has been up and down all season, but just when I needed him to be up, my word, has he been up. Through on goal and he never looked like missing. Made it look easy. And Spurs lead 3-0 at Wembley. De Bruyne into Haaland. City surely now just looking for a consolation. And that pretty much sums up their entire performance. Vardy old to bring it forward. Under pressure from Richarlison who's come on as a sub. Even though we are still 3-0 up. We are still pressing like it is 0-0. This is a fantastic display from Spurs. Arguably our best performance across the entire season. Just when we needed it to be. As Manchester City play it out from the back here. Out wide to Rodri who finds himself in an advanced position on the right hand side. Tries to go down the line into Yudoki. Brilliant defending. Well City have a corner here deep into stoppage time. But surely any goal here will be a consolation. But it's Manor Solomon who heads it clear. Only out as far as Kevin De Bruyne. He's got absolutely no options. Doesn't know what to do with it. As the referee blows for full time. Well, our hearts were broken by Manchester City in the Carabao Cup final. But my word, did we exact our revenge here today. Dusan Blahovic with the winning goal in the end. Full time. City nil. Spurs three. And with Everton beating Fulham 3-2 in the other semi-final. It will be the Merseyside team we will face in the final. For the chance for one of these two teams to lift the trophy for the first time in over two decades. But after being brought back down to earth. Only being able to secure a point away from home against Fulham. We now have a game where we can put the final nail in the coffin of our North London rivals Champions League hopes. As with just five games left in the Premier League this season. It is time to welcome our North London rivals Arsenal to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in a showdown that will leave lasting ramifications in the fight for Champions League football. And a couple of tired legs in the squad means the likes of Benjamin Pavard and Brennan Johnson will start their first ever North London derby. Jorginho for Arsenal. Ooh, wonderful pass into Gabriel Jesus. And he goes into the penalty box trying to wriggle away from Christian Romero. Lovely pass into Emil Smith Rowe. And just like that, Arsenal lead. Well, Emil Smith Rowe celebrates in front of the Tottenham fans. And that was not the start that neither they nor I expected. Easy for Arsenal in the build up. And look at that from Emil Smith Rowe. A wonderful finish, but he was given too much time and space in the penalty area. And he will punish you. 1-0 Arsenal. Vinchenko for Arsenal into Odegaard. Out of the two teams in this opening 20 minutes. Arsenal have certainly started off the stronger as they look to quieten down the home crowd. But it's a good challenge by Benton Core. And Madison can now get the ball clear. 
Vlahovic is going to try and look over the right-hand side, but it's well intercepted by the Arsenal defenders as Emil Smith-Rowe knocks it past Pedro Porro and has the pace to get away from him here. Drives down this left-hand side, cuts back in. Wonderful work here. He's just making Pedro Porro look foolish here, and there's nothing he can do about it, but eventually he does manage to put a challenge in. But Arsenal have a corner. Short corner here that Odegaard takes into Saka. Oh, he just goes through the legs. Wonderful stuff from Saka. It's back out to the edge of the box. Back out to the goal scorer. Into Gabi Jesus on the volley. Wonderful save from Vicario. But we need to get our act together here as we are all over the place in the opening 30 minutes. And we give the ball away cheaply again. Emil Smith-Rowe into Odegaard now. I just do not know what is happening. Perhaps we're complacent. I don't know. Maybe we've got one eye on the FA Cup final. I do not know. But Romero comes across. Hoivier wins it. Can we try and hit them on the counter-attack here? Madison trying to get away from a couple of challenges. Gets away from three challenges and lays it into the bath of Jung Min Son. He finds Vlahovic. Vlahovic is going to try and hit this from distance. Oh my word, what a strike. Well, look at the celebrations. You can see how much the goal means to him. Look at a way to start your first North London derby. It's an outrageous goal from Dusan Vlahovic on the edge of the penalty area. He absolutely smashes it. The goalkeeper has no chance. It's 1-1. Hoivier. Into Brennan Johnson. We've got our tails up here. That has really given us some momentum that we need. Madison plays it into Benton Court. He's going to look for a goal. Well saved by Gabriel. Madison to take the resulting corner. And that goal is exactly what we needed to try and kickstart ourselves in this game. It's out to you, Doggy, who hits it with his right. It bounces back out. Hoivier will pick it up. Everyone's fancying a chance from distance. And Hoivier has done just that. Well, perhaps we have found Arsenal's Achilles heel. Hoivier, from pretty much the exact same distance that Vlahovic struck from, has done the same thing. This time he hit it hard and low. And Ramsdale could get nowhere near it. He celebrates. We've turned the game on its head. 2-1. Saka for Arsenal into Jesus. Trying to be challenged by Udogi, but it's well worked here. And Koke with a lovely step over, but Udogi's come back. Brilliant defending from the young Italian. Jungman Son into the path of Bentoncourt. End-to-end -end stuff here to start this second half. And Bentoncourt plays a lovely ball back to Jungman Son. He goes in field for James Madison. Madison now can try and pick his spot into Vlahovic. You tried to turn. Well defended again. Romero. Into Pavard, into Benton Core. We're trying to play our way through the Arsenal midfield here in the Arsenal press. And we've done just that. Into Madison, into Blahovic, who strikes this time with his left. Everyone fancies it. Brilliant save, though, this time from Ramsdale. Madison will take the corner, fires it into the near post. Oh, my goodness, that is the best of the lot. Absolutely outrageous. Every single goal so far of this game has been an absolute screamer. And Hyung Min Son has made his claim to score the best of all three. What a ball absolutely outrageous bicycle kick from Hyung Min Son against our North London rivals to give us a 3-1 lead at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Brandon Johnson into Vlahovic. Vlahovic taken out from behind there. Horrendous challenge and the referee is going to come over here. What card is he going to issue? He's calling the player over and it's only a yellow card. He can be a very happy man. Look at this challenge. That is absolutely horrendous. He should not be on the pitch. Saka, lovely pass out to Havertz on the right-hand side. Arsenal have got to do something here. And Gabi Jesus, oh, he's missed a sitter. They've got a corner here that Koke looks like he's going to take. And it looks like he's going to take his short. He does do just that. Saka trying to get past the substitute. Richarlison fires it all the way out to the edge of the box. Gabriel, the centre-back, into Havertz. Nice strike, good save. Arsenal again now have got the bit between their teeth. They know they have let this game slip away from them here and they've got to try and do something to get back on level terms. But it's brilliant defending by the substitute, Manor Solomon. And now Udogi can bring the ball forward for Tottenham Hotspur into Brennan Johnson. He's looking for some sort of support. Can he fire a ball forward? He can't. Gabriel for Arsenal. Just over five minutes on the clock here for Arsenal to try and get two goals. But they are still being pressed high by all of these Tottenham players who have put a real shift in after a bit of a trouble some 30 minutes. Koke brings it forward for Arsenal. They just don't know what to do with it. They've completely run out of ideas here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We have bamboozled them with our fantastic play and our fantastic goals, but perhaps not as Gabi Jesus tries to bring it into the box, fires it into the middle of the box, and in the end it's headed away well by Basuma. Benton Core into Richarlison. Richarlison's going to try and feed it through into Madison. Oh, he gets away from the challenge of the Arsenal defenders, and that is is absolutely fantastic. He was desperate to get in on the act, and my word, has he done just that. A beautiful ball, a beautiful skip away from the challenge of the defender, and look at this for a strike. Absolutely smashed it past the goalkeeper, just like our other three. We found their Achilles heel, and my word, have we taken advantage of it. Madison celebrates. 
4-1. Fortunately enough for Mikel Arteta, the referee puts him and the rest of his Arsenal players out of their misery. What a sensational performance from all of these Spurs players. They celebrate wildly and rightly so. It's one of the biggest victories we've ever had over Arsenal in the Premier League as a full-time it finishes Spurs 4, Arsenal 1. And of course, I have to lap up this victory in front of the media. And to be honest, my players are getting more and more confident as this incredible run goes on. We're unbeaten in all of our games so far in this episode. And long may it continue. And it's a result that moves Arsenal down to 8th place in the Premier League and surely now all but secures our place in the Champions League heading into next season. But with a 4th place Liverpool up next at Anfield, now is the time to make sure that happens. James Madison pressing high and winning the ball back and Vlahovic just does the dance around the Liverpool defenders. And look at this, he drives into the box full of confidence here. Well saved by Alisson. And in the end, Kulusevski hits Hits them on the rebound. He was in the right place at the right time and he celebrates having given us an early goal here at Anfield. Well, Vlahovic did the hard work driving away from the defenders. The shot wasn't strong enough, but Kulusevski was on hand to get it past Alisson, who could only get a hand to it into his own net. But he won't mind one bit as Kulusevski gives us a 1-0 lead. Joe Gomez down the right-hand side trying to go past Bentoncourt. Does go past Bentoncourt, feeds it into the box. A diving header away by Hoybier. Can we try and hit Liverpool on the counter-attack? James Madison looks for Kulusevski, finds Kulusevski, and Kulusevski down the right-hand side. He's got the beating of Van Dijk for pace here. Into the box, hits it with his right, goes wide. Mo Salah cuts inside, can't go past your doggy, and again we win the ball back. And again, we can try and hit them on the counter-attack. Madison to try and feed. Oh, that is beautiful. A brilliant ball to your doggy onto the left-hand side. Into Jungman Son. Shapes up to strike on his right. Big save. Madison to pick it up on the edge of the box. Into your doggy. Your doggy into Christian Romero. Romero twisting, turning, striking with his right. Had the same idea that all my players had against Arsenal, but it didn't come off this time. Oh, yeah. Ooh, gives that ball away to Endo really cheaply now. And Liverpool can now try and hit his back. Endo gets it back though, he's going to try and look for Andrew Robertson on the left hand side and he's beaten Pedro Porro, fires a ball in, well headed away by Udogi. James Madison now to try and release Kulusevski but instead finds Vlahovic and Vlahovic is going to try and do the same thing he did before, switches it onto his left, oh it's just over the bar. Udogi into Madison in a central area, wonderful ball back into Udogi, he's going to try and cut it back, looking for Vlahovic and it's a brilliant, brilliant save. Madison will try and fire it back into the penalty area, looking for the head of Jungman Son, going to come out to Bentoncourt, hits it on the volley, it's blocked. Keeps the ball alive though. Benjamin Pavard to strike this time with his left. And it's easy for Alisson. Your doggy. Oh, gives the ball away really cheaply. And now Jota can try and get into our penalty area here. Wriggles away from the challenge of Christian Romero. It's into Luis Diaz on the edge of the box. Great shot. Even better save. Mo Salah. Oh, he's got the option of Kwanzaa up ahead of him. Where on earth is your doggy on the left hand side? Into Jota. Jota strikes. What a save from Vicario. McAllister with the corner. Liverpool here with just 20 minutes remaining have got their tails up, but they are sensing they can try and get an equaliser, but it's headed away there. And Jungmin Son gets onto the loose ball and he's going to try and bring it forward, but he doesn't have any options. It's well defended by Kwanzaa again. Into Jota. Liverpool now out to Mo Salah. They are desperate to try and find an equaliser to keep their Champions League dreams alive. It's headed clear. Mo Salah gets on the rebound. Into Jota. Jota strikes. Big save from Vicario. It's bouncing around like a pinball inside the penalty area. Liverpool still have it with Endo. Well challenged by Hoybier and eventually we managed to get the ball clear. Mo Salah, nice pass into the path of Luis Diaz, into Robertson. Robertson back into Jota, into Mo Salah who strikes. Oh, it's a big chance and it's gone wide. Benjamin Pavard, nice ball through into Benton Corey. He's broken the lines really nicely. Richarlison on as a sub. Finds the other substitute in Manor Solomon. He switches back onto his right foot. Looks in field for Basuma. Another substitute. Allison with a big save. Brennan Johnson back into Hoybier against the defenders. It's still in the penalty area though. Richarlison tries to win it. Headed clear though. Benton Core wins it. Into Manor Solomon. Into Hoybier. Cleared away by Liverpool. We are deep into stoppage time here. And that is a brilliant ball through to Mo Salah who somehow managed to stay onside. Cuts it into Jota. End-to-end -end stuff here in stoppage time. Well defended. And fortunately enough for me, the referee blows for full time. The crowd go wild as they know how important that win is. I shake the hand of Jurgen Klopp. Kulusevski the man with the only goal of the game inside the opening 10 minutes. But it was enough to secure the three points as at full time it's Liverpool nil. Spurs won. And with that win and the clean sheet from Vicario, it means with three games to spare, we have secured Champions League football for next season. And after beating Burnley 4-0 in our very next game, 
game, managing to beat Manchester City 3-0 courtesy of a hat-trick from Rodrigo Bentoncourt, and rounding off the season with a 3-1 away win against Sheffield United. Not only have we managed to get through this episode unbeaten, but we've managed to secure second place in the Premier League in our very first season in charge. After an up-and-down season, Guillermo Vicario is named the Premier League Goalkeeper of the Year, and in spite of a few dodgy moments with him keeping 20 clean sheets in all competitions and moving his rating up to 84, it's not hard to see why. James Madison has been arguably our best player across the entire season with 11 assists and 9 goals to his name in a fabulous debut season for the club. And Rodrigo Bentancourt is also impressed in the centre of midfield, going up to an 85 rating and chipping in with 6 goals and 7 assists. But after a tricky start to life in Tottenham colours, Dusan Vlahovic has established himself as our number one striker and has chipped in with 14 goals across all competitions in 32 appearances eight of those coming in 24 Premier League appearances. And with his striking competitor Richarlison only managing 11 goals and five of those coming in the Premier League, plus Aleo Valiz returning from his loan spell from Aston Villa next season, having chipped in with three goals in only seven Premier League appearances, we have a huge decision to make over the futures of all three of those strikers heading into next season. For now though, the press have gathered as it is now time for Tottenham Hotspur to play in their first ever FA Cup final since 1991. And I am issuing a rallying cry to all the players and fans alike. I have the confidence that we can go one step further than we did in the Carabao Cup and we can win the FA Cup. But standing in our way will be a resurgent Everton side who will be equally as desperate to win their first piece of silverware in over two decades. It is Tottenham versus Everton in the FA Cup final. This is my starting 11 for the biggest game so far in Tottenham season. It is time for the boys to show what they can do. Into Vlahovic, who's come deep to try and collect the ball and get himself involved in the play. Early doors here. Jungman Son on the left-hand side. Nice pass back into the path of Yudogi. Into Bentoncourt. We're just playing it around nicely on the edge of the Everton box. Pedro Porro into Kulusevski. He tries to switch it onto his left. Feeds in Madison. Well blocked by Keane. Corey for Everton. Skipped away from two Tottenham challenges there. Really well done. Gets it back from McNeil and drives forward here. Nice pass into Dan Juma, the former Spurs man. Into Harrison. Big save from Vicario. Addison into Heung-Min Son, who finds himself the most advanced in the central areas. It's out to Vlahovic. Vlahovic is going to look for the overlapping run of Pedro Porro down the right-hand side. He looks in field for Kulusevski, tries to shift it onto his left, Tarkovsky, with another piece of good Everton defending. Decore, he looks like the danger man for Everton so far in this opening 20 minutes. It's out wide to McNeil. Everton, though, pressing for the first goal of the game. It's well deflected. End-to-end -end stuff here at Wembley as both teams desperately searching for a foothold in this game. It's fired across into the path of Kulusevski. Again, well defended by Keane. Harrison now to bring the ball forward for Everton. Lovely step over to get into the box. And Dan Juma. Oh, how much he would have loved to have scored against his former club. Everton corner. 33 minutes played. Neither team able to break the deadlock so far. But out of the two teams, it is Everton who have looked more likely. Dan Juma picks it up in a dangerous position. Vicario with another good save. Another corner for Everton here. I think it's their third of the game as they press on to try and break the deadlock. It's headed away by Benson Core. Only out as far as Idrissa Garnike. He picks it up and finds Michael Keane. Back to Tarkovsky as the two centre-backs combine and Pedro Porro intercepts it well. And can we try and hit them on the counter-attack here? It's Vlahovic to bring the ball forward. I'm going to try and look for Heung-Min Son down the left-hand side. Lovely ball into him. Where is Yudoki when I need him? If Heung-Min Son tries to go it alone, can't get past Patterson. Pedro Porro wins it high into Vlahovic. Vlahovic turns into Madison. He skips away from Decore and strikes from distance. It's the first big save the Pickford had to make. And it's going to be Madison to take the resulting corner. Fires it in, looking for the head of Benjamin Pavard. Couldn't get on the end of it. Will we be able to? No, Keane will bring it away. Well, as the second half begins here at Wembley, neither team is able to find the breakthrough, but both of them will be desperate to get the first goal, as it looks like it's going to be a tight affair, but it's Mikolenko to try and bring it forward. Good defending here from Pedro Porro into Bentoncourt. First time pass into Heung-Min Son, who's got nice space on this left-hand side to move into. He finds Vlahovic, who's dropped deep. Vlahovic gives it back to Heung-Min Son, into Madison. Touch, turn, brilliant. It's 1-0 Spurs. Well, James Madison runs to the corner flag and gives it a kick and celebrates with his teammates. The fans go absolutely crazy. Jordan Pickford can't believe his luck. Well, he got immensely lucky there, James Madison, but it was a beautiful piece of build-up play. The touch, the turn, and it came off the defender. I think it was keen in the end, and Pickford just did not know where the ball was going. No, it was Tarkovsky, and it came off him, and Pickford could do nothing about it. And Spurs take a 1-0 lead here at Wembley. McKenney for Everton. Fires it across to Mikolenko on the left-hand side. He'll be desperate to get more involved. It's a nice ball into Decore, who's been the danger man so far. And he forces Vicario into his first save of the second half. Does Sam Vlahovic now. 
Turns, going to try and find a ball all the way out wide to your doggy, and it's well done here. Your doggy to fire it back into the box. Easy for Pickford in the end, though. Tarkovsky for Everton, being put under pressure here by James Madison in the high press. We are all over Everton here, but they are doing really well to try and beat the press. And it's out wide to McNeil, who's gone past Pedro Porro, and now we are in trouble. Down the left hand side, can he find a good ball in? Romero heads it clear, but only back out as far as McNeil. This time goes short. Decore on the edge of the box, into Idris Agonike, strikes from distance, Vicario forced into another save. Just over 10 minutes remain on the clock for us to try and keep this game at 1-0. Oh my word, we got desperately close to conceding a goal there. But it's hoofed away by Hoybier. Patterson picks it up into McKinney. He's going to try and fire it in, surely. Nice play here to get past Ryan Sessegnon. Instead, go short to Beto, who's coming as a sub. It's fired back into the penalty area. Hoybier again with another header away. This time it's Jungmin Son. And it is desperate defending here from the Tottenham players. Decore for Everton fires the ball forward. Is it too little too late as we win the head? Deep inside Everton's half. Benton core into James Madison. James Madison to just keep hold of the ball. Hoybier into Brennan. Brennan Johnson, Brennan Johnson to try and take the ball to the corner flag, Brennan Johnson just to hold it up now, waiting for the referee to blow the whistle, five minutes has gone, surely referee gives it to Pedro Porro, instead he fires it across, looks for Hume Minson to put the game to bed, Hoybier with the volley, straight at Pickford, but it doesn't matter, because the referee blows for full time, the fans go absolutely wild, the players go even more crazy, as Tottenham Hotspur Football Club have won the FA Cup. I said at the start, it has been a roller coaster of a season and what a way to end it. The Tottenham players are about to write their name into the history books at the club. Hume Min Son leads the celebrations and it will be the South Korean, the new club captain of Tottenham Hotspur, who will be the one to step up and lift the FA Cup for the first time in his career and the first time for Spurs in over 30 years that they are crowned FA Cup winners. It's a momentous day for the players, it's a momentous day for the fans and it's a brilliant way to end our first season in charge at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And with one major trophy down, Champions League football secured for next season, we are well on our way to becoming the best team in European football. Join us for season two, it is one you do not want to miss. Thanks everyone for watching, I'll see you again next time.